CataractCloak.com. Surprised by silicon oil during FACO. What should you do now? Now, the first clue is the patient got a white cataract shortly after pars plantar vitrectomy. And you can see breaking the sneaky here, but look how deep the anterior chamber is. Almost too deep, right? So break the sneaky 360. Obviously, video sped up here. And now I've got to expand that pupil, put a little more viscoelastic in there, get maybe a pupil expansion ring going or iris hooks. So all pretty routine, but the catch is why a vitrectomy caused the cataract? Well, because you damaged the posterior capsule. And so remember, you probably have a break in the posterior capsule, and this is why a lot of the lens material has already fallen into the vitreous cavity. Go back to an old video, number 453 from a few years ago. And there was a quiz and what was different about this white cataract. And you can see there the clue is on that A scan. So look at that inset picture. Again, this is old video number 453. We'll put a link here for you. And if you zoom in and look, you can see the posterior capsule is already open. And you can see that on the A scan. That's an important clue. So this patient had damage to the posterior capsule during a vitrectomy. And as a result, developed this white cataract shortly thereafter. All the... The uh, lens material became hydrated. The lens, the nucleus, the majority of it's already fallen into the vitreous cavity. Obviously, you can't see it. There's no view because the cataract is completely white and opaque here. So our anonymous surgeon here does a great job of getting the capsule X done. Tripan blue dye staining was accomplished. And now what's going to happen? Well, you put the phago probe in the eye, and it's going to be basically an empty bag. Look, trying to stir it up, it's just fluffy cortex. Where's the nucleus? the nucleus has already fallen in the back of the eye. And so now when you put the phaco probe in the eye, you think you're just going to aspirate this down. That looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Sure, but that's just cortex. And you can see, look, there is a big opening in the posterior capsule. The nucleus is already gone. So the goal here is clean up that cortex, whatever you can here in the capsule bag. You're going to get a lot of silicon oil coming out of this eye. Remember, the retina surgeon placed silicon oil inside the vitreous cavity at the time of the vitrectomy, and that's when the capsule, the poster capsule, was nicked. So as you go in with the cortex removal here with the IA probe, you're just going to get prolapse of more and more and more silicon oil. So what do you do here? Well, you can float out all the silicon oil, or most of it. You can simply put a trocar in the eye, either pars plana, or even just you can put a catheter from an IV, a plastic catheter, 23 gauge, through the main incision, through the posterior capsule, and by slowly infusing BSS in the vitreous cavity, the BSS is water, it's heavier than the silicon oil, it'll go down towards the macula while floating up all the silicon oil, and you can keep burping the silicon oil out through that main phaco incision here. Now, it's going to be tough to aspirate the silicon oil because it's so thick through the very tiny aspiration port of the IA probe. So in essence, you're just washing it out of the eye here. So you can see the surgeon here has tried to tamp a knot as much as possible, but there's a big opening in the posterior capsule. This patient obviously is going to need a three-piece lens. Here comes a three-piece lens. Probably going to have it in the sulcus, hopefully uh, optic capture behind the rexus with the hapix and the sulcus, and that'll go in nicely. Obviously, do not put a silicon oil uh, silicon IOL in an eye with silicon oil because the oil droplets will stick to that silicon optic and it will be impossible to remove. So you definitely want this monofocal um, acrylic lens. Hydrophobic acrylic would be a great choice. And you can see that's placed in the sulcus and you can optic capture it if possible. That'll help also create a barrier effect to hopefully prevent more prolapse of the silicon oil. But eventually, this patient needs to go back to the retina specialist. For what? Well, in order to have a removal of all silicon oil, but also remember the nucleus wasn't there. That nucleus has already fallen back in the vitreous cavity. The nucleus was in the vitreous cavity before the cataract surgeon ever touched the eye. And that's an important lesson here. So you wanna see these things in the pre-op period of the consultation, there are clues that you could have figured out ahead of time. Hey. This is not going to be a routine cataract. I bet you the nucleus is already in the vitreous cavity. And you could have done a B-scan or had your retina surgeon do a B-scan to confirm, yep, in fact, there's the nucleus already in the vitreous cavity. A case like this, probably the easiest option is to have your vitreoretinal colleague just do a full pars planar lensectomy because the lens is already back there and remove the silicon oil and then send the patient to you uh, in an aphagic state and probably still with the remaining anterior lens capsule, at which point you could then do a secondary IOL. But this works out too. The patient's getting the IOL done now 
and it'll be securely placed there. And then the patient can go back to the retina specialist for that vitrectomy and removal of the remainder of the silicon oil. Now I'd send the patient in the relatively soon post-op period. Don't send this patient for a month or two. I'd see the patient post-op day one. If all looks pretty good as it should, okay to send the patient that same day or within a few days to the retina specialist. And then within a week or two, the retinal specialist can take this patient back to the OR for that parts plan of vitrectomy, lensectomy, silicone oil removal, etc. But yeah, important, important clues. You should notice this ahead of time. Always ask yourself, why all of a sudden did the patient get a white cataract just a few weeks or even a month or so after the vitrectomy? Hmm, makes you wonder, right? Think about it. So here's the end of the case, just suturing it up. We'll go even faster on the video here. I definitely agree with this idea. Place a suture in here because you know the patient's going to have a vitrectomy relatively soon and you don't want to have that main incision open up. So I like the idea of the suture in there. And again, try not to manipulate too much because as you do, look what's going to happen. More silicon oil is going to come up. There it is. Let's get the patient off the retina specialist. Leave me a comment below. What would you have done in this case? And check out video 453.